What's good, YouTube? It's your boy 2K to God, my man Sess. Welcome to the Gods of Boxing Talk as we continue another episode of breaking down all these goddamn fights on December 10th. But I'm not complaining, not one bit. This is what we like in boxing, you know what I'm saying? A lot of good fights out there on one day. I'll be yeah. up at 2 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, <laughs> streaming all the way up until motherfucking midnight the next the same fucking day bro the next hey, day, you know, dedication right there. exactly that's how many fights is gonna be on man but um for this video we we kind of want to do a lot of the lesser um the less prestigious fights um this one's actually the main event of the uh uh jamal charlo julian j rock williams uh card um it's gonna be jesus cuellar versus Abner Mars for the WBA 126 pound title. Uh, Jesus Cuellar is 5'6", he has a 68 inch reach, he's 28 and one with 21 knockouts. Uh, Abner Mars is 5'4", with a 66 inch reach, that's two inch height, two inch reach disadvantage. 29 mm -hmm. and two, one loss, 15 knockouts. His two losses were to Johnny Gonzalez and Leo Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. Now, Abner Mares has been talking recently um, about his merger with Robert Garcia uh, and basically stating that that has reinvigorated him as a fighter. He has got a new lease on life. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? A nigga is no longer going to be taking L's against anybody because of Robert Garcia. Sir! Yeah. What up? <laughs> <laughs> How you feel about that, man? And uh, break down the fight. Let me know who you got. <laughs> man. Hey, well, well, I do, I do think, think Robert, Robert Garcia is a good, good trainer. trainer. Yeah. So, so I, can, I, can, I, can I can see where he's going, going with that because, because of the, um, the work, work that Robert, Robert did with, with or the or work, work he currently does, does with Mikey, with Mikey um, and, and the work that he did with uh, Chino Madonna in the past, who is one of my favorite fighters. Um... So, so I, can I can see, see where, where Abner Mar is getting that from. The only thing is, oh, oh wait, I'm sorry. Very, very interesting, interesting tip here, people. people. Um, Robert, Robert Gar Garcia, Garcia trained um, Jesus, Jesus Cuellar for seven, seven fights, I believe. Yeah, yes, seven he did. Fights. yes, he did. Yep. So, yes, he did. Yep. so if, if Abner Mar is really, really feeling like that, that and I mean, he, 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 he really, really believes that, that, he really, really feels, feels it, um, he could do something in this fight. I, for one, believe, believe that Mares is actually um, the, the more agile, agile guy. guy. You know, um, I, I think, think he, it, it, when, when he, he wants to, to and if he, he wants, wants to, he can actually use his feet, he can actually box, and he can actually do some things. The, the only thing about Adam Mares is he loses his fucking mind when he gets in the ring and he hears the people screaming his name or screaming for the fight yep. that that Mexican pride that bravado comes out in and he produces is what looks like Leo Santa Cruz um uh or what looks like Leo Santa Cruz fight yep difference is he cannot fight Jesus Cuellar that way no. he will get put to sleep. Absolutely. Everybody go night night. Everybody go night night, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna get put to fucking sleep if he goes in there with that type of mentality. He cannot do that. His his square. I will give him credit. He's a very um. He's a very good puncher. He can actually he can crack really good. Um. He knocked out Vic Garcin. Um. Very nicely. You know. In that fight. So, you gotta be very wary of a guy like that. I think that if Mahrez goes in there and sticks to the game plan, uh, Robert Garcia kind of alluded to it in an interview, they're looking to box. They want to go in there and box, and they want to do different things with his square. The only thing is, I just don't know if Mahrez can actually produce what they want him to. Um, on the other hand, Jesus Cuellar is a guy that I can't say I was really big on um, because of the absence of one of boxing's most important fundamentals. Boxing 101. 101, people. A jab. <laughs> that, exactly. <laughs> that 
absence of just taking that lead hand and sticking it out there. When a guy doesn't do that, I have to search for what he does best. And typically what he does best is what he does the entire fight. You know, he's looking to either land his power hand or he's looking to constantly pressure you the whole fight. And even, you know, I understand those things work, but they only work for so long. Right. So I wasn't really too big on him, but at the same time, Freddie Roach is training him now. And I also think Freddie Roach is a good trainer. See, we don't, we don't hate on, you know, or, or anybody on this channel, and we're not biased, okay? <laughs> so I actually think Freddie Roach is a good trainer as well. And in an interview, Roach said something that I really, really, really had to hear. And he said that they had basically been working on Jesus Cuellar's jab. Okay. Freddie so, Roach? Freddie Roach, yep. Yeah, he yep. ain't known exactly. for working on jazz. He's not, exactly, exactly. Huh. But I believe, I believe Freddie, the one thing about Freddie Roach is when all else breaks down and when all else fails, Freddie Roach does no box. You know, he's trained Manny Pacquiao for a very long time and he's had guys come, he's had all different types of styles come in his gym. And I think he does no boxing. With Jesus Cuellar, I don't feel like there was anything else Roach could have taught him. Right. Because he, he's already one of those guys that pressures you, that stays in front of you, that tries to get you to go, to, you know, go where he wants you to go. So, I already know one of those guys that hits real, you know, hits real hard. And he's all, he's all, he's also one of those guys that will go to war with you if need be. Yeah. You know, that's that. Honestly, I think that's the kind of fight Cuellar wants. Right. You know, he wants you to open up. Because he knows if I catch this motherfucker, I'm going to hurt him. Yeah. So when you go to a fighter like, when you go to a trainer like Freddie Roach and you already have all those things, I'm not sure there's much he can do for you other um, other than show you something different. And the different thing that, that he has to show you is probably going to be more on the uh, boxing level. Right. You know, it's going to be more um, on trying to slow the fight down and implement what you like to do. You know, um... So that's something that I did hear Roach say, uh, say in their interview. Now, how true it is, I can only take it for what it was. I can only take it at face value. He said it, so I'll give him credit for it. But I think that's going to be a shocker to Abner Mares is if Cuellar sticks to his same game plan. Do what you do. You know, we know that you want to put forward pressure, and we... we you know, I know you want the guy to either stand right in front of you or you want the guy to go backwards. But guess what? Put the jab in his face as you're doing it. Right. That's all I can ask for. Right. Let me tell you something, people. If Cuellar does that, it's going to be pretty easy. Yeah. I honestly think it'll be an easy fight. Um, if he does that, just come behind your jab. My last point, 2K, and... We can wrap it up while I'll turn it over to you. Jesus Cuellar can be hurt. Oh, hell, he, yeah, you already took it out. Exactly. Oh. And we've seen that in the big Darchinian fight. He took some plus shots from Darchinian, and he was actually one of the shots, um, one of the shots buzzed the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. And Robert Garcia uh, alluded to this. He said that he went down in that fight, but the referee didn't call it a knockdown. Okay. He said, but Cuellar was hurt when he, came, uh, when he came back to the corner. He said he was hurt. You know, it, 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 it's just, like I said, it's just that mentality, that bravado that pretty much got him away from what he was feeling and he went in there and did what he did. But Adam Mares, even though I don't think he's a power puncher, I do think Adam Mares has really good snap on his punches. Yes, he does. Um, Ask my so, man, my man, uh, Anselmo Moreno, man. <laughs> yeah. That motherfucker yeah, was taking yeah. them shots. Got dropped and shit. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, honestly, man, this fight is going to boil down to who implements their game plan. If the game plan is go to war, that's gonna fall inside Hazel Cuellar's pocket. He won't even have to use the jab because he's gonna put Marez to sleep. If Marez comes in there, slow the pace just a little bit, and actually sticks to some to some good fundamentals, 
and show us the guy that you were before you lost to Yanni Gonzalez. Show right. us that guy. You know, I would really, really, really lean more toward him, but I'm going to go with what I've seen of late, and I'm going to say Jesus Cuellar takes this fight, and I'll say it's going to be by... I would say... I'm going to go ahead and say that he can knock Marez out. Damn! I think he'll... Yeah, 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 I know. I know. Hey, he, Marez is tough as shit. Yeah. But if Cuellar puts that forward pressure on him and it's behind a jab, it's going to be very hard for Abner Marez to do what he wants to do. I just think when a guy's pounding on you and he can punch, uh, Leo Santa Cruz can punch. He's not known as a puncher. So that's the element. You can't fight this cat like you fought Santa Cruz because he don't hit like Santa Cruz. Yeah. But that's going to be my prediction, guys. I know a lot of people's jaw probably on the floor, <laughs> but... <laughs> Mine is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, the last point you just made about the Santa Cruz fight, to me personally, it was a majority decision win for uh, Santa Cruz. One one judge had it a draw. Yeah. But I absolutely did not think Mares fought an, a great fight in that fight. I didn't like me, the way he looked either. at hell no. all. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, to be honest with you, that fight pretty much – set in stone my conclusion that he's pretty much done. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, Johnny Gonzalez really fucked him up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, he, he had a full head of steam. Uh, given the style that he has, when you derail that style or you derail that full head of steam the way that Johnny Gonzalez did, it's kind of hard for that guy to come back. Um, and that's what we're yeah. seeing here. Um, in reference to the Robert Garcia comments that he had made, <laughs> Robert Garcia is a good trainer. Yeah. Good trainer. Uh, I really like what he did with Marcos Maidana. He, Marcos Maidana hey. always had a jab. He just never fucking used it. Yep. So Robert Garcia it. was like, yo, come here, bro. Give me that, give me that <laughs> jab. That's what you're going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what Robert Garcia is known for doing. He's known for bringing out the best of attributes that you already possess. Okay. Yeah, Abner Mares's problem for me is that he needs to change some things. There's some things in the ring that he needs to get better at, and there's some tendencies that he needs to change. Um, for example, he is a fast-handed fighter. Um, yeah. He has some nice footwork, but he doesn't use his footwork, yeah. and he doesn't rain combinations. I mean, his let's, what's his what's his reach? His reach is 66, uh, 66 inches. Okay. Yep. That's kind of in between short. I mean, it's average for a guy at one twenty six. Yeah. But his hands are so fast that he can box from the outside if he chose to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. He did some. He showed some great boxing ability against Anselmo Moreno. All right, which was probably mm -hmm. one of his biggest wins uh, of his career because Moreno was, I was like, yo, Moreno, they, hey, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, nigga. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I re was really high on Moreno, and he fucking dusted him off. Um, mm -hmm. And it was the boxing, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. On you know, some Jay-Z shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was the boxing. Um, but he's since abandoned that, you know what I'm saying? And I think yeah. that he need. I mean, maybe Robert Garcia can get him to do that because I just said he's good at bringing the best out of shit that you already do. But maybe I think just it's and some of Moreno fight is so, he's so far removed from it that yeah, I yeah. think it's like he needs a trainer that can instill that back into him. All right. Yeah, yeah. On top of that, show him some defensive fundamentals. Okay. Yeah. Robert Garcia and Freddie Roach are two guys that have no type of defensive fundamentals within the, they don't teach their fighters how to defend properly yeah, Mike yeah. Garcia is an excellent excellent fighter mm -hmm. but he don't defend that well yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. if yeah. Mike Garcia had defense do you understand how sick this motherfucker would be oh, oh. but he don't defend yeah. well why because his brother uh I don't it was I think his dad was training him at first 
Um, oh, okay. His uncle, or some, somebody a part of his family was trained, mm-hmm. and then his brother took over. But they all pretty much follow the same principle, you know, the same rhythm yeah. in their gyms on how they train their fighters. So there's really no difference. Um, but that's my point. You know what I'm saying? He, he, mm-hmm. he needs to develop a defensive game plan. I, I don't think he will. And Cuellar, to me, he reminds me of, and don't take this the wrong way, everybody. He reminds me of Oscar Valdez. Um, okay. He's very explosive, man. Like, Oscar Valdez, though, he has more fluidity uh, yeah. in his movement and in his punch variation and how he strings together combinations. Um, but it's not a it's not a huge difference. Um, Cuellar is very explosive. He could beat your fucking body to shreds. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, just that explosiveness on a guy like Mares, who was already taken out in the first round once before in his career. Yeah. He was already outclassed by another high volume, not necessarily explosive, but he's, he's high volume, like I just said. He's mm-hmm. in your face. Um, he was taken out by that guy, not knocked out, but it, to me, he was beaten convincingly. I don't know how it was a majority decision. Um, just those things already happening. I got to go with Cuellar. I don't think he knocks Mares out. Okay. okay. But I'm going to give him 116, 112. Uh, 115, 113, 115, 113, because Cuellar is not a very smart fighter. He doesn't have the IQ um, to basically adjust to anything that Mares may do that Mares is successful. But on the other hand, Mares is not a guy that adjusts either. So yeah. what will happen is Mares will win a lot of rounds, but Cuellar will win more. So yeah. we may have a close fight on our hands, but it'll be a close fight. That it's, that's unanimous. I think all judges would okay. see, like, you know, 115, 113, 116, 112 for Koyar. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's move to the next one. We got a pretty intriguing fight. My man says really don't give a fuck about this fight. <sighs> a lot of other cats don't give a fuck about this fight. I give y'all a hint. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. 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 Let me you do it real you, quick. Yeah, hey. you do. Hey. <laughs> Give y'all a hint. He glassed me. He glassed me. Damn it. Glass me. I'm going to shoot you, David. I'm going to physically shoot David. <laughs> that oh, shit is a man. classic, fuck. Damn, he man. He glassed me. I, I heard that shit. I was like, what the fuck? Is, how do you glass a nigga? You know what I'm saying? I <laughs> if y'all don't know by now, if <laughs> yeah, if y- if y'all don't know by now, off my man Sessa's beautiful acting, you know what I'm saying? We got Derek Chisora versus Dillian White. That's gonna be on, I believe, the undercard of um, Anthony Joshua, Eric Molina. So, okay. Dillian White, man, he's six foot four. He has a 78 inch reach. He's 19 and one. His one loss to Anthony Joshua with 15 knockouts. Derek Chisora, a very experienced fighter, mm-hmm. okay? C-level fighter, in my opinion, but he has the experience of a B-level fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a C-level fighter for sure. <laughs> he's one of those guys. This is, this, 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 this is what I said about him, man. By the way, he's 6'1 and a half, 74-inch reach, okay? So Dillian White is much bigger, and he has a much more of a reach advantage on him. Mm-hmm. This is a guy who... In my opinion, he has all the personality in the world to sell a fight with his antics and get people intrigued on a fight. Shit, I'm even intrigued in this fight where, you know, before he threw a table at Dillian White, I was like, man, I'm trying to see this bullshit. And he, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he threw the table at him. I was like, oh shit, nigga, I'm trying to see what happens next. Right? <laughs> He's got all the personality to keep fans intrigued in his fights, but he doesn't have the skills to deliver. And I compared him to a heavyweight version of Hank Lundy. Hank Lundy does the same Mm. shit, but he just can't deliver. You know what I'm saying? Um, Derek Chisora's fought every goddamn body, man. Yeah. Yeah. Tyson Fury twice, David Hay. Uh, Even the cat we had mentioned earlier, Robert Hellenius, who he lost to. Mm-hmm. He's, he's fought a lot of guys. Malik Scott, 
Uh, I don't even know why I just mentioned that nigga. But anyway, <laughs> he's a lot of guys. You know what I'm saying? He's he's his he's been around the block. He's 26 yeah. uh, and six with 18 knockouts. Um, <laughs> this fight is a tale of whether or not Dillian White will either be a fighter who fights for BBB of C titles in, in the UK, the Commonwealth <laughs> yeah. belt, you know what I'm saying? The the European Boxing Union, EBU. <laughs> this fight will Dang. tell us if Dillian White is only that level of a fighter, okay? Yeah. yeah. If he beats the more experienced Derek Chisora, he will be given the opportunities to fight the better fighters of the division. If he loses to this guy, well, then you'll see him fighting the scrub motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers yeah. we've never heard of before. You know what I'm saying? For the rest of his career. That's yeah. what we're going to see. Uh, my man Bo, shout out to my man Bo. He made a, 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 a good comment uh, last night in our podcast. He said, Dillian White is nothing more but a younger Derek Chisora. And I have to oh. 100% agree with that shit, fam. That's the shit. Good one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, that's the best comment you ever made in your life, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, nah, but uh, Dillian White, man, his flaws, perfect example in the, uh, the, the Anthony Joshua fight. I think his will to want to beat Anthony Joshua was so much that he actually was able to get inside and land a beautiful shot that hurt Anthony Joshua. He wanted to beat him so bad. He wanted to show everybody, hey, me beating him in the amateurs was not a fluke. I could beat this motherfucker again with no headgear. You know what I'm saying? But Dillian White, his footwork looks like he's drunk. (laughs) This motherfucker cannot stay on balance fam like he yeah. hurts anthony joshua and then he looks like he's sitting on a pair of fucking roller skates you know what i'm saying uh, you know what niggas look like when they about to when they lose balance on roller skates and they about to fall uh, and their feet are getting kicked up in the air and shit that's what yeah. dillian white looked like in the fucking ring what's wrong with this nigga's balance man you know yeah. what i'm saying if he would have been able to maintain balance and sit down on another shot, on a follow-up punch, we might be looking at something different today. Oh, yeah. There's a possibility he may have knocked out Anthony Joshua if he could have yeah. stayed on balance, but he can't. And that worries me, dog. Like, he's beating, mm-hmm. you know, guys after Anthony Joshua that don't really fucking matter. And even though I don't rate Derek Chisora very high, again, he has the experience and he has the will to want to beat motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? And if you give him, he's a fighter that if you give him an opportunity to take advantage of flaws that he feels uh, uh, that he can exploit, he's going to do that. And you'll fuck around and lose to a guy that you don't think is really that good. That's the type of fighter Chisora is. With that said, just given the size disparity, I got Dillian White. Okay. Plus, I, Derek Chisora is not a good fighter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. uh, I got Dillian White winning this fight. I just think he's too big. I think he's going to use um, all of his height, all of his reach. Um, I think losing to Anthony Joshua taught him a few things. Um, yeah. and, I, and don't be surprised if in this fight you see him utilizing some of the shit that Anthony Joshua used on him doing it to Derek Chisora. You know what I'm saying? So, I got Dillian White in this fight, man. Um, I don't think he knocks him out. I Uh think he just cruises to a unanimous decision, man. What do you think? Okay, man. You know, I'm going to make mine real short and sweet because I don't like either one of these cats. No doubt. But... (laughs) Uh, I definitely agree, like I said, with everything you said. That there's not too much more I can really touch on. Um, I got Dillian White, but I think he'll actually stop Derek Chisora. 
I think Chisora is competitively so far removed from um, just from from the sport. You know, I, I I never thought he was a real competitive guy anyway. No, he's you know, not. You know, yeah, when it when it came to fighting uh, the upper the upper echelons of the division, who whom he's been in the ring with, I, I mean, you just you can see that disparity. Yeah. You know, it's like they're here, and he's like he's not even on the fucking screen. Like, I mean, he he he's nowhere near these guys. And in all of those fights, he puts up a fight for so long, but then it's kind of like, ah, he's beating me. I can't do anything else to him, he you know. Me. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey. He, he's he's gloving me. He's gloving me. <laughs> I can't do anything, so I'm just gonna quit. So uh, yeah. I, I, that's just you know that that's to me that's always how I thought of Derek Tussauds. Like I, you know, I was telling you in a, in one of our private conversations that, you know, I've never really liked Tussauds because he's a head case. He's a okay. guy that I believe loses all emotional control when he's confronted with any type of um, real altercation. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't think he's a guy that really truly believes in himself. So he tries to be as intimidating as he possibly can. You know, um, he tries to come off as if he doesn't fuck, you know. So he'll allow himself to lose control and he'll allow himself to uh, to do certain things like spitting water in uh, Vladimir Klitschko's face right that, before, dude. oh no, let me, man, me and you both, I would have <laughs> buried that motherfucker. Fuck fighting him, I don't even wanna fight you no more. Nah, bro. Um, but <laughs> he spit in Vladimir Klitschko's face right in front of Vitaly Klitschko before they were getting ready to fight. You know, uh, he did that. Then he, then before that, he slapped uh, Vitaly Klitschko at a press conference, you know? <laughs> um, and, 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 and then the incident with the table, him throwing a table at uh, Dillian White, you know, and, and, and he gave his reasons, but at the end of the day, you gotta understand, you are gonna fight this guy anyway. Mm -hmm. So why even give him that much? Get in the ring, take care of your business, and and come with it. And that's where, like I said, that's another part of that disparity between the upper echelons and guys like Derek Chisora. Right. Well, Vladimir, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Vitaly could have fucking destroyed Derek Chisora at that press conference when he spit in his face. Yeah, he could have. I mean, he could have he could have did everything in his power to kill Chisora, but he knew he was going to get him in the ring and fuck him up. You know, why not get paid um, for it? Exactly, yep. exactly. Why ruin my money right here? Yep. You know, um, same thing with uh, uh, well, Vladimir. He could have did the same thing. You know, he could have beat Chisora's ass before his brother even got the chance to. Yep. You know, but why fuck everything up? Um, so that's a little bit of the backstory as to why I re I'm really just not a Chisora fan. Dillian White to me is one of those guys that runs his mouth, um, and uh, he can produce at this stage a bit better than Chisora, but at the end of the day, I don't think too highly of um, uh, Dillian White's skill set. Like you said, his legs look like a fucking fish out of water when he's in the ring. You know, he he, he just doesn't look steady on his legs. He looks like he's, uh, he just doesn't look steady to me. You know, so I guess it is what it is for what it's worth. I'll pick Dillian White. I'll pick him to stop Chisora. Uh, maybe in the ninth round. Okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think around the ninth round. I think Chisora gets tired a bit before that. But around the ninth, he'll definitely be ready to go. So, um, I, I, that's the way I see the fight going. No doubt. Man, I think Dillian White, I don't... Man, niggas be injecting his legs with like Novocaine or some shit, fam. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, numb him up. <laughs> the niggas' legs look like <laughs> his legs look like some straight rubber bands, nigga. I have no idea yeah. what the fuck is wrong with this dude's balance, man. Anyway, yeah, yeah. He fucking, he fucking glass me, you fucking he... wanker. <laughs> <laughs> David Hay, glass me. Come on, man. <laughs> Oh, let's move <laughs> to the next one. Oh, shit. Well, there really ain't no next.
next one. We just really going to cover, because uh, we're supposed to, Luis Ortiz versus David Allen. Mm-hmm. Um, David Allen is still a prospect. He's 9-1. and one. His one oh, loss. Oh my God. His one loss was to none other than Dillian White. <laughs> oh. Yeah, exactly, Phil. <laughs> Murder, she broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this nigga about to get slizzarded, nigga. Yo. I don't even. We don't even need to break height, weight, none of that shit down. Nah. Man. I got Luis Ortiz in two rounds, fam. Unless he's just going to play around with this motherfucker <laughs> just to get some rounds in. I, yeah. This is ridiculous, man. You know, Fresno Kendo is fighting Shannon Briggs for the WBA regular title uh, every since oh, yeah. Lucas Brown popped hot again, right? This should be Luis Ortiz versus Shannon Briggs, fam. For the WBA yep. regular title. Not no motherfucking Fresno Kendo. Okay. But the WBA continues to put the shaft to <laughs> fucking Luis Ortiz. <laughs> and oh, yeah, true. I mean, on some yeah. straight American me shit, B. You know what I'm saying? Oh. They had to date. The nigga, the WBA bent Luis Ortiz over and put that oh. jagged ass knife up his ass, fam. <laughs> Oh, Real dang, talk, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, come on, man. Why, why are you gonna get this nigga leftovers of a guy that's like two levels below him? Yeah. What does this prove? And I don't even know if it's for that dumbass belt he just got off of beating that bumass <laughs> Malik Scott. Uh, uh, WBA Intercontinental W. WCW, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get the Damn, fuck out of here, man. I want to see this bullshit. I'm going to watch it because Luis Ortiz is my nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, man. man, Ortiz in two fucking rounds. Unless he plays with him, it'll be in three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And the last one is... uh. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is going to return to the ring. Um, I guess I should have looked up what weight this motherfucker plans on fighting at. Because oh, yeah. this nigga stay fat. You know what I'm saying? He just, hell yeah. Hey, if he ain't fat, then I don't know what the fuck he doing, dog. Because being Man. fat is something that nigga like doing. Along with smoking. Exactly. Hey, yeah. hey, bro, just make sure I got my fat and my weed. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't eat nothing else. Dog, the nigga don't even eat the meat off of steaks. He eat the fat. You know what I'm saying? Real Damn. talk. Hey, y'all, y'all can have the meat. Just give me the fat. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> so, anyway, he's fighting a guy named Dominic Bish. Bitish. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> He was waiting on it. <laughs> I was, yeah, yeah, damn, man. So he fighting, he fighting Dominic Bitch, okay? <laughs> Dominic Bitch is 32-2 and two with one lo- uh, one draw and 11 knockouts. I mean, I shouldn't fuck with the boy like that, Ooh. but this is the most controversial show on YouTube, so his name is Dominic Bitch, okay? Damn. He, he's a German fighter. He's fought primarily in Germany, okay? He's fought five times outside of Germany, um, but two of those five times were in the U.S. So this is going to be, uh, and obviously he hasn't fought anybody, even on the weeded out fat ass <laughs> Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.'s level. Okay. Yeah. So Chavez, of course, hasn't fought since July 2015. He fought a guy named Marco Reyes after he was, you know, embarrassingly knocked the fuck out by Andre <laughs> from Fara. You know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. Um, but he fought a guy named Marco Rez and won that fight pretty easily. I expect him to win this fight pretty easily. This guy is just not on his level. He doesn't have any punching power. There's nothing really to worry about from a guy yeah. uh, where his last name is Bitch. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? So this uh, should be an easy win. Uh, uh, if Chavez looks bad, he should retire. And he yes. actually supports my opinion because he even said himself that if he loses this fight he will retire 
Um, yeah. He's also saying if he wins, he wants Canelo. So this nigga's jumping from one end of the spectrum to the next <laughs> based on what? the results of this fight. Of course, he's what? not going to get... He ain't going to get Canelo. Yeah. He ain't going to get Canelo. He, he, what the fuck is he going to get him? Whoa, well, wait. Yeah. He can't make he can't 160. Even... Exactly. exactly. So Canelo ain't going to 168. Yeah. He barely want to go to 160. So he, he definitely ain't going to 165. Yeah, exactly. Uh, who's who's but anyway, but, anyway. Yeah. but he, he, he he's been <laughs> talking about Canelo. And that's actually a fight I wanted to see a long time ago. Not oh, yeah, definitely. yeah, back when back when Chavez was actually making 160. Yeah. I was like, yo, I want to see that shit, dog. That was an excellent yeah. matchup back then, but. Yeah, now, yeah. you know, Chavez Jr., he's been eating a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that Billy Ho Sanders has been making them. Oh. You know what I'm I think they hang out, bro. Like, they really hang that. out together. Billy yeah. Ho. Hey, yeah, real BFF, son. Hey, <laughs> Billy Ho is in the kitchen with an apron on. <laughs> whipping up them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, fam. And Chavez Jr., fat ass, is eating them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straight hey, up. Hey. So, well, uh, Billy, Billy, Billy Ho got, got, got a little friend, a little BFF necklace, he got one piece, and Tyler Jr. got the other piece. The little broken, the, the little heart, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Half a heart oh, yeah, and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they connect them, and that's, that's where the magic, magic happened, man. Come on, <laughs> chop my shit together. Oh, <laughs> shit. I'm telling you, fam, but... That's going to conclude this segment. We got a lot of fights uh, this weekend. We went ahead and covered them all for you guys. Let us know what you think. Do what you do in the comments section. Be real. This is Real Talk for Real Fans. One.